Healing has been, uh, uh, at times, a very hotly debated issue um, in South Africa, and Saipa has been you know, very involved, along with many of the stakeholders, in the discussions. Um, it kind of comes and, and goes away um, as an issue, because, of course, there is some wheeling that does happen. Wheeling has happened for a long time in South Africa, and, and we are grateful uh, for that. But in truth, over the years, we haven't seen a lot of new projects, new IPPs, new generating assets come online um, and wheel in South Africa. Um, and really, uh, that's a combination of many factors. Um, and it's been always difficult to discern, you know, what are the primary constraints there. Uh, we obviously have an emerging um, electricity supply industry, and it's, it's an exciting time in South Africa. And uh, it's it's not necessarily that it's always been wheeling, but there, there has been the um, for new projects. It's it's not enabling for new projects to offer the risk mitigation that often is required by project developers when they're bringing on new projects. Now, a very exciting development has been the exemption camp um, of, let's say, embedded generation plants. Um, this is the move that's on the table at the moment to 100 megawatts. Everyone is eagerly awaiting the fine print that will accompany that change in our electricity supply industry. However, Let's hope that that's enabling. That's certainly the intent, and everyone's excited and hoping that this will bring new capacity on load to ease our supplies constraints. And we are really hoping that wheeling will be enabling in that requirement for the for the necessary risk mitigation that will be required by some of many of those projects that should be built. So it's a very opportune time to be refocusing on wheeling. You know, CPCS and Norton Rose Fulbright, so we've teamed up to undertake this project with GIZ in the South African electricity industry, which is effectively aimed at trying to identify areas for improvement in the wheeling framework. And, and we're doing this through uh, extensive stakeholder engagement, capacity building, uh, reviewing of best practice, uh, and, and a review of uh, the current wheeling framework in South Africa. <clears throat> We're working closely with, with a working group of industry players, uh, and this, this working group contains members from ESCOM, SALGA, National Treasury, DMRE, NURSA, and, and AMEU, and I'd like to uh, you know, just put, put my thanks out there to, to the great engagement we've had from from those parties and, and others uh, in the sector as well, including SAIPA and, and many other people we've spoken to. So what we've done here is we've, we've, we've assembled this group, um, CPCS, which is a Canadian manage, management consultancy across uh, many different infrastructure asset classes in Africa, alongside Norton Rose Fulbright, who's uh, right in the thick of, thick of it in South Africa and, and dealing with these uh, you know, South African issues on a daily basis. So, what's the project we're working on specifically? So it's got four phases. In the first phase, we developed uh, a background document, which I hope has been shared with, with everybody on the call here today, but uh, if not, I, I believe it's available uh, through SAIPA. Uh, secondly, the, the second work package, which is where we are today, is, is aimed at capacity building and knowledge transfer uh, and discussing key issues from from the perspective of uh, different industry stakeholders. In the next phase and, and where we're really building to is, is working on a set of tools um, or documents which can help push the wheeling framework forward and, and make it more accessible for, for everybody. And that's what the assignment is. Uh, and I'll give you a quick summary of what we've achieved so far in the first phase. So briefly, in, in work package one, as I mentioned, we developed a, a background document which analyzed the current wheeling framework and compared it to international examples. Um, in doing so, we, we developed a kind of roadmap for the future. Now, at the time when we wrote the paper, which was uh, 
you know, it was finalized in, in early January. Um, it was, I'll admit, a, a pretty ambitious roadmap. Um, but nonetheless, I think the actions contained in the roadmap are, are, are the right ones, but maybe the timing is, uh, is now a little bit ambitious. So this included things such as uh, short-term actions to improve the wheeling framework for everybody, uh, ongoing focus on, on SCOMs on bundling, and the development of, of a market design paper to pave the, pave the, the way for, for future market arrangements. Um, that's in the short term. In the medium term, we we're looking at uh, you know proposing a, a focus on SCOMs uh, unbundling still in the creation of the independent uh, transmission system market operator, uh, as well as the central purchasing agent recovery plans for mu municipalities, revisions to the legal and regulatory framework, and then the implementation of, of new markets as envisaged by by SCOM. Now, in, and in the medium term, it's really about increasing the liquidity within these markets. Now, as I mentioned, we have some of the short term. Um, sorry, I hear an echo. Could I ask people to mute their microphones? No. Thank you. Um, we have identified some short term actors of the framework, and you can see them here on the screen. I won't go through each of them in detail right now because I think we'll talk uh, a bit about these later on. But briefly, include things such as amplifying the, the current third-party network charging rules, standardizing the approach to municipal wheeling, and I think that's a really key one. Um, enforcing the distribution code tariff methodologies. Um, working on identifying and developing an imbalanced pricing regime. Uh, I know that's that's. That's a really key point that we're going to talk about uh, a bit more in a bit more detail. Um, potentially revising the, the contents of the trading licenses to make them uh, more suitable for the future market and for uh, you know, to reflect the new generating licensing threshold, um, which we which has already been mentioned, and potentially developing some model use of system agreements to to improve the standardization. I should mention the work we've been doing. We, we started this project in about September of last year, and uh, since we started, there's been a lot going on. Uh, this includes, you know, many many webinars and announcements in, in the sector related to wheeling. Um, you know, presentations by by NedBank, Site, uh, uh, and, and various others. Announcements of uh, new IPP tendering rounds. On the legislative slide, um, we've already mentioned the proposed amendments to, to, to Schedule 2 of the ERA and the changing of the generator licensing threshold, which, by the way, does not solve the issues of wheeling. It just perhaps removes one hurdle, and we'll talk about that. And alongside this, there, there are a lot of other people doing work on, on similar issues right now, including uh, SCOM, National Treasury, DMRE, um, the DBSA, who is looking into uh, a study on contingent liabilities, um, Treasury, who are now looking at procuring a, a consultancy to work on, uh, you know, identifying the preferred market model for the future, and of course, ongoing unbundling of SCOM. So it's a quite a dynamic, dynamic sector right now, and it's uh, you know we've been trying to. Uh, to develop our proposals and keep up with all the changes that are going on. So, so that that's that's that. Now, now, why are we here? Um, basically, you know, we're we're in the second phase of our work, and it's really focused on uh, knowledge transfer. So, um, you, you know, the, the, this workshop in particular is focused on IPPs and, and large users, and and, and uh, you know, identifying key electricity sector concepts that are, that are important, not only now, but also in the future, to talk about challenges that, that, that you face as IPPs and, and large users, uh, and set up potential reforms uh, for, for the future. Now, that's the background. Uh, 
the running order for, for the presentation, which I think was also included in the, the invitation, um, is as follows. So first, I'll, I'll, I'll cover off a little overview of the, of the industry structure and, and the implications and, and issues that that involves. Um, we'll have uh, we'll have a, a discussion and presentation from Keith Bowen at ESCOM, as well as one later on from Garth Grubel at Saipa. So there, there's a lot to get through, but there is also opportunity for Q and A throughout. Um, if you have questions that that come to mind as as you see things on the slides, feel free to pop them in the chat box, and we'll keep track of those and try to address them during the Q&A sessions. Great, so moving on, I'll just run through a, a quick overview of, of the industry, who are the key players, what does this mean for wheeling? Now, obviously, I think you all know ESCOM, um, they're the dominant player in generation and retail, and IPPs are generally speaking, uh, selling to ESCOM on long-term basis uh, via the PPB, uh, PPAs through the tendering grounds. Sorry, that was tough to get out. Um, there is a little bit of wheeling going on, as I mentioned, or as <coughs> Andrew mentioned at the start, but it's a relatively small portion of the overall generation portfolio. Secondly, municipalities. Um, there are over 250 of these guys and around 170 of them providing electricity services. Now, most of these guys are small, um, supplying, you know, about 163 of these municipalities are supplying less than 30% of, of municipal customers. So you've got the big metros who are, who are the dominant players and tend to be the ones who, who are more focused on, on wheeling and contracting with IPPs. And, and then the rest of the other municipalities tend to be a little bit further behind in their thinking and don't have experience contracting with IPPs. And obviously IPPs, you all know who you are and, and what that's all about. I mentioned uh, the, the REAP program before and how most of the uh, IPP energy is going through 20 year PPAs uh, awarded through the REAP program. For the most part, it's, uh, you know, these I IPPs are intermittent renewables um, that need to fit within the IRP, which is the Integrated Resources Plan allocation of, uh, of generation capacity. Although this will change if this new uh, licensing exemption comes into effect. Now, one, one thing I want to stress, and it's really important as we talk about wheeling and, and the future, is that uh, these renewable IPPs cannot provide 24-hour-a-day power to their to their customers, so it means there there will be a need for uh, that that part of the energy that they cannot provide to be provided by somebody, whether that be ESCOM uh, directly or by a trader, and that means that the role of these traders uh, will probably change going forward. Now, a few questions for the future of IPPs, um, one in particular around sovereign guarantees and whether those will persist going into the future. I mentioned DBSA is already looking at the project around uh, sovereign guarantees. The incentives, yes. Yeah, so, so that what what you know what will be the incentives for IPPs in the future? Uh, you know, if they're selling to the central purchasing agent or or ITSMO at ESCOM, and then finally, of course, uh, the the bankability of new IPPs in the market, particularly if sovereign guarantees are removed. Um, and if they're subject to uh, to other other balancing rules. And finally, traders, um, you know, these there's one trader that exists in the market right now, PowerX, and, and another one possibly coming online, Energy Exchange. And what they do is they buy power from IPPs through a PPA and sell them to custom, sell that energy to customers through an offtake agreement. Now, again, they're not they're not supplying a what we call a full supply contract, so not providing 100% of their customer's energy, and currently not subject to imbalances. So Stefan will go into a bit more detail later on what, what that means and why that's important. I mentioned 
the role of these these traders are probably going to change in the future as as more wheeling uh, comes onto the system, um, and particularly as as ESCOM may uh, in future react to this wheeling and, and start to develop uh, imbalance charges.